Where is the king? The king himself wrote to view their battle. Of fighting men they have full three score thousand. There's five to one, besides they all are fresh. God's arms strike with us, tis a fearful odds. God be with you, princes all, I'll to my charge. If we no more meet till we meet in heaven, then joyfully my noble lord Bedford, my dear lord Gloucester, and my good lord Exeter, and my kind kingsmen, warriors all, adieu. Farewell, good Salisbury, and good luck go with thee. Farewell, kind lord, fight valiantly today, and yet I do thee wrong to mind thee of it, for thou art framed of the firm truth of valor. Exit Salisbury. He is full of valor as he is of kindness, pricely in both. Enter the king. Oh, no, that we know had here but one ten thousand of those men in England that do no work today. What's he that wishes, sir? My cousin Westmoreland. No, my fair cousin, if we are marked to die, we are now to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honour. God's will, I pray you, wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor care I who doth feed upon my cost, and it yearns me not if men my garments wear. Such outward things dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honour, I am the most offending soul alive. No, faith, my cousin, wish not a man from England. God's peace, I would not lose so great an honour as one man more methinks would share from me for the best hope I have. Oh, do not wish one more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of St. Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when the day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say... Tomorrow is St. Crispian, and he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot. But he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth, as household words, Harry the King, Bedford, and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups, freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few we happy few we band of brothers for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother be he near so vile this day shall gentle his condition and gentlemen in England now abed will think themselves accursed they were not here and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that fought with us Upon St. Crispin's day. My sovereign lord, bestow yourself with speed. The French are bravely in their battle set, and with all expedients charge on us. All things are ready, if our minds be so. Perish the man whose mind is backward now. Thou dost not wish more help from England, cause. God's will, my liege, would you and I alone, without more help, could fight this royal battle. <laughs> Why, now thou hast unwished five thousand men, which likes me better than to wish us one. You know your places. God be with you all. Once more I come to know of thee, King Harry. If for thy ransom thou wilt now compound, before thy most assured overthrow, for certainly thou art so near the gulf thou needs must be englutted. 
Besides, in mercy, the constable desires thee, thou wilt mind thy followers of repentance. That their souls may find a peaceful and a sweet retire from off these fields where wretches, their poor bodies, must lie and fester. Who hath sent thee now? The constable of France. I pray thee bear my former answer back. Bid them achieve me and then sell my bones. Good God, why should they mock poor fellows thus? The man that once did sell the lion's skin while the beast lived was killed with hunting him. And many of our bodies shall no doubt find native graves, upon the which I trust shall witness live in brass of this day's work. And those that leave their valiant bones in France, dying like men though buried in your dunghills, they shall be famed. For there the sun shall greet them and draw their honors reeking up to heaven, leaving their earthly parts to choke your climb, the smell whereof shall breed a plague in France. Mark then abounding valor in our English, that being dead, like to the bullets grazing, break out into a second course of mischief, killing in relapse of mortality. Let me speak proudly. Tell the constable we are but warriors of the working day. Our gayness and our guilt are all besmirched with rainy marching in the painful field. There is not a piece of feather in our host. Good argument, I hope, we will not fly. And time hath worn us into slovenry. But by the mass our hearts are in the trim. And my poor soldiers tell me, yet ere night, they'll be in fresher robes as they'll pluck the new gay coats o'er your French soldiers' heads and turn them out of service. If they do this, as if God pleased they shall, my ransom then will soon be levied. Herald, save thou thy labour. Come thou no more for ransom, gentle Herald. They shall have none, I swear, but these my joints, which if they have as I will leave them then, shall yield them little. Tell the constable. I shall, King Harry... And so, fare thee well. Thou never shalt hear Herald any more. <sighs> I fear thou wast once more come again for ransom. My lord, most humbly on my knee I beg the leading of the vanguard. Yeah, take it, brave York. Now, soldiers, march away, and how thou's pleased as God dispose the day. <laughs> 